<coughs> can you have any involved gunshot wounds? Very many of them. Okay. And so that was my next question. How, the percentage, you think it, it's a lot? Yeah, I can't, yeah I, can't, I can't tell you the percentage, but I've, I've examined many hundreds of gunshot wounds. Thank you, sir. And is wo Actually. I'm going to um, draw your attention back to September of 2020. Did you conduct an autopsy on Douglas Benefield? I did. I did. And when did you do that? The autopsy was performed in the morning of September 28th of 2020. And can you explain how you, uh, your procedure for conducting an autopsy? Uh, certainly. <laughs> and um, I don't think my procedure is greatly different from other medical examiners or forensic pathologists. Uh, but the procedure starts with the examination of the body in its state as it arrives, you know, at our facility where the autopsy is performed. That includes documenting the condition of the body with photographs and diagrams and written notes. Following that, if there's uh, reason for evidence collection, and typically that's going to be in concert with a law enforcement agency, then uh, evidence collection ensues. After the initial part of the examination and the evidence collection, uh, then there is a more detailed examination looking for identifying characteristics, um, changes that, that might represent natural disease, and then any injuries that are present. After all of that, then I think what many people might consider the, uh, the traditional part of the autopsy begins, which is the internal examination where the, uh, the body is um, uh, examined internally for, again, the same kind of changes of injuries and natural diseases. And is that the process you followed in the autopsy of Mr. Benefield? It is. Thank you. And during your autopsy, are photos taken to document injuries found um, 